so you're curious about that ripple stitch. Let me show you how it's done. Well, hey there, my friend. Welcome back to Be Hooked, the place where you and I turn yarn into anything we want, hobby or lifestyle. Well, in today's episode, I wanna teach you how to crochet a ripple stitch. And before we dive into the tutorial though, I wanna mention that there are quite literally dozens of different ripple stitches. Now a ripple in its most basic form is just a waved stitch pattern, something with peaks and valleys. And you use increases and decreases to get those peaks and valleys. So you'll learn about those basic, those fundamentals right here in the tutorial. I'll teach you a, a basic stitch pattern that you can apply to a project today if you wanted to but you can also take the knowledge and the tips that you'll find here and apply it to other ripple or wave stitch patterns. All right, so for today's ripple stitch and what we're going to cover here in the video, you wanna make sure you're comfortable working the double crochet stitch. You'll also need a six and a half millimeter hook and the star for today's tutorial is An Italian Story by Red Heart Yarn. This is one of the new yarns to their lineup and look at it, oh my gosh. This colorway is called Malty. It is absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to work it up in this ripple stitch pattern. Honestly, I love using variegated yarns for ripple stitches. The color changes really do a lot of the work for you and a colorway like this is very effective in giving you a beautiful project. So Red Heart Yarn, an Italian story, a six and a half millimeter hook, and we're on our way to the tutorial. So to begin our ripple pattern, we need to make a slip knot so that we can set ourselves up to work our foundation chain. Now this particular version of the ripple stitch works in multiples of 14 plus three. So since we're just working on a swatch, let's go through two repeats. So we'll chain 28, that's two times 14, and then we're going to add three to the end of that for a total of 31. Okay, so now I've got a foundation chain with 31 chains and I'm ready to start on the first row. To do that, I need to first find the fourth chain from the hook. So I've got one, two, three, and four. Now I like to work in the back bump, so I'm just flipping that over as I set myself up to double crochet. We're gonna double crochet throughout this entire pattern with the exception of a couple decreases. So make a double crochet in that fourth chain from the hook. Now that's our first real double crochet of this row, but this chain three here also counts as a double crochet. We'll talk more about that once we get to the end of the next row. For now, go ahead and make one double crochet into each of the next four chains. So when you count it out, we'll have a total of six stitches when we count this chain three here at the beginning. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's how I know I'm ready to start on my valley. Before we move on, I wanna show you just a swatch that I've already worked up. By the way, this is the colorway called Multi. This one is called Terra. They're beautiful colors. So we're starting over here. We've worked this little section right there, and now we're at this valley. Well, the valleys are made up of two decreases, then we work up, and when we get to our peaks, we have two increases, and that's the repeat. All right, so we know that we need to work two decreases next, and those are called double crochet two together. So first, wrap your yarn around your hook, insert it into that next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, then yarn over and pull through two. Now we'll wrap the yarn again, insert your hook into the next chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and you'll have three loops on your hook. We'll yarn over and pull through all three. Then we wanna do that once more. Now 
Then we're going to double crochet once into each of the next four. We're going to get us up to that next peak. And then you can already start to see it take shape a little bit. So we're ready to work those two increases. And these are even more simple than the decreases. For this, we want to make two double crochets in the same chain. And then we'll do that once more in the next chain. So put two double crochets in the next. And that's where our repeat begins. We'll make one double crochet into each of the next four. That'll get us down to that next valley. And now I've made it down to my next valley. One little tip here is just to watch your work and that'll really tell you what you need to do next because we have just plain double crochets working to these points and then you can just sort of look at your work and let that show you what you need to do. So I've got a valley, I've got a peak, I need a valley. So to do the valleys, we do two double crochet, two together. So we do that twice. And now we've made it to the last little bit. We need to make one double crochet into each of the next four and we'll increase on our last chain. Now, if you've done everything correct and you've counted, then you should have that one last chain remaining after you've worked your four double crochet. Once again, we want to increase there, so make two double crochets there. We're basically making like half of our point. Okay, so this is what our work looks like at the end of our first row, and I promise you it gets much easier from here. It's always a little difficult to work in those chains. So to start off the next row, we're gonna chain three, and this will count as a double crochet. Then we'll just turn our work, and we need to increase here. So we're increasing on the first and the last stitch of every row. And the way we do it here at the end is we make a double crochet in the same stitch where this chain three is coming from. And we're not doing anything different as far as the repeat goes. We're gonna make one double crochet into each of the next four stitches. And then we get to that valley, we'll make two decreases. So double crochet two together twice. Then double crochet once into each of the next four stitches. And let's say you get distracted and you can't remember how many double crochets you made. Well, these double crochet two together, they kind of stick out so you can see them right away. It's sort of like an upside down V at this point so I can say, ah, okay, here is my last decrease, my double crochet two together. I've got one, two, three, and four. 
and here I am at my peak. So that means I need to make two increases. So I'll make two double crochets into each of the next two stitches. And then repeat one double crochet into each of the next four. And I've got my valley here, so I'll make two decreases. And now at the end here, we'll make one double crochet into each of the next four. But we can't end things there. Remember I told you that chain three counts as a stitch? Well, if we were to stop here, we would decrease and our work would get smaller and smaller. So we need to work an increase or two double crochets in this chain three. So just find your top chain, your third one here. It's going to be the back. So you may just see that bump. You can really just work your hook into anywhere you can get it to go. And then make two double crochets. And the repeat is really that simple. We're not doing anything different from row to row. We just need to make sure that we're doing an increase at the beginning and the end, and we're counting in between. Now what I like to do is just say it in my head, one, two, three, four, and then go on to the next, because as soon as I think I'm in a groove, then I inevitably will miss something and make a mistake. So here's a swatch I have completed in that multi-color way. And as you can see, this is a reversible stitch pattern. So it makes it really great for a scarf. Also, what you've worked on so far is really the perfect width for a scarf. So if you wanna get some more practice in, then by all means, you could easily turn this into a scarf just by continuing that repeat, just that one row until it gets as long as you want, and then you're ready to fasten off. So there you have it, a very basic and simple ripple stitch that you can use for baby blankets, afghans, pillows, scarves, you name it. This stitch is great for so many different things. Now the star yarn in this tutorial today once again is Red Hearts, an Italian story. This is their Ombra line. This is another colorway called Terra. This again is multi. Gorgeous stuff. Check this out at your store. They're beautiful. You need to get your hands on some if you haven't done so already. If you're a yarn fanatic, just like me, you gotta try the new yarns. This stuff is great. Now it's been a real pleasure teaching you how to do this ripple stitch today. I would love to know in the comment section what type of project you'll be working with this particular stitch. So just leave that comment below. I would love to look through those. And of course, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to the Be Hooked YouTube channel. You can find more videos just like this with stitch tutorials, as well as full project tutorials teaching you how to knit and crochet. Well, my friend, it's been so much fun and I'll see you in the next one. So there you have it. There is a very basic ripple crochet, crochet. Okay, that's enough. That's enough.